This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents with a quick exhortation. If God tells you to do something, if God has you in the center of his will, and you know, you and he both know that you are obedient to what he's telling you to do. And you're not veering to the right or to the left. You are dead center right on doing everything you can, everything in your power to obey what you know God told you to do. And things go awry. Things go cuckoo, helter skelter. Attacks come, things come against you, things go wrong, things fall through, things fail. You're wondering, what? But God told me to do this. Listen to this. In the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, God led Moses to lead the people of Israel into the desert into the wilderness. We call it the wilderness wanderings, right? After so many areas of murmuring and complaining and pouting and sticking the lip out and attitude and all that stuff against God, a 13-day journey turned out to be a 40-year journey. Now, listen to this. When God took Moses, led him to lead the people to the Red Sea, and Pharaoh had finally said, get out of here, when his son, all the firstborn, were killed. This is the one right here. All the firstborn were killed. And it's like they finally, ding, got the message. You don't play with God. He'll hit you where you hurt. So what happened? Pharaoh gets a hardened heart and decides he's going to go after the Israelites and bring them suckers back because they be his slaves and he ain't letting go. But God told Moses, take them here. He took them there. They're facing the Red Sea. They're camping out for a while. And then they're, they're frightened because they see from the distance, they see the, fair, uh, the army of Pharaoh pursuing them, hot pursuit, right? So what happens? What do they start coming at Moses with? What are you doing? You brought us out here to die. Oh, oh. And they go panicking and they're having a hissy fit and they're jumping all over him for obeying God. Thank God for a level-headed leader. Moses said, be still. In other words, y'all shut up. <laughs> be still and see the salvation of the Lord. And he raised that little old rickety raggedy stick and held it over the water. And the wind came. And while, the, while Pharaoh and his army are coming, Here's the beautiful part. God sets up the, the pillar of fire to keep them separated. They cannot penetrate that fire. The fire did not hurt the people of Israel, but it would have hurt them, the enemy. So when the water parts, I can imagine there had to be some gigantic tornado going down the aisle, just opening up, parting the waters. And God made a way where there was no way. Now that should tell you this. Number one, when you're in the center of God's will and things go wrong and you can't find a way out, if God puts you there, baby, God knows how to get you to the next point. God knows how to do it when you don't. While you're scratching your head, God already has the plan laid out. Had it laid out before he showed you the plan. Before he told you what to do. He already knew the obstacles that were going to come. Did he not? Did he not rehearse to Moses before he even made the first move? Did he not tell him, I'm going to tell you to do this. You're going to do that. 
And when you do it, Pharaoh's going to do this, and then I'm going to do that with judgment. Every single judgment, every single from the uh, the 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 uh, locusts, the the blood, the, the bloody waters, all of the different things that he did. He told Moses he was going to do it, which means he knew from the get what was going to ensue during the whole process. When God tells you what to do, he already knows what's going to ensue. He knows what you're going to face. He knows what obstacles you're going to face. He knows what forms of interference are going to rise up, what, what blockages, what delays. He knows it all. And he's got the answer for every single one. Now, he turns around. Moses leads the people on dry ground. Now, when you see the wave come back off of sand, the sand is wet. But God was so thorough, he made sure the sand was dry. Dry, solid ground for them to cross over. And once they got over on the other side, God allowed, he allowed, because he was setting an ambush. That was the first ambush I ever saw in the Bible. He set an ambush for their enemies. Pharaoh sent his army. The water was still parted. The fiery pillar that God had as a barrier was now removed. So they take it as a green light. Uh Uh-huh. We're going to get y'all now. And we're going to escort you back. And they get in the water and they're just pursuing hot pursuit with their wagons. What did God do? He softens up the sand and makes it hard for the wheels to turn. He's making it hard on them now. Some of them are falling off the wagons. It's really difficult. Well, that slows them down, right? And he slows them down. God knows how to time things now. He slows them down just right, just right, so that Every bit of that army is smack dab in the middle, right? Nowhere to run to, nowhere to hide. And the water, the wall of water collapses. And every body, every animal, everything is buried in that sea. Never to be heard of again. Now, Moses obeyed God, continued to obey God, and continued, did he not, in spite of the obstacle. See, that's where I believe that term came from. You know how we say getting caught between the devil and the deep blue sea? Pharaoh on one side, the ocean on the other. Nowhere to run to. So. You got to stand there. You got to stand. You got to trust that God is going to open up a way for you that the enemy never thought of because God's in control. God will make a way where there is no way. If he promises you, if he tells you to do something and he tells you the results and he tells you it's a blessing, You walk forward and step into it, even if you got to get your clothes wet while you're doing it. By the time you get over there, you're going to be so together. You won't lose a thing. You won't be hurt. Now, you may lose a few dollars here and there. You may have a few lost battles, but you will not lose that war. You can count on God. I had to lose a house to get a house. I had to lose an ex-husband to get the best husband. Whatever God allows you to lose, he always has a better, oh, come on. He always has something better in place of it. Always. (laughs) All right. So I hope that encourages you. You keep believing no matter what. If God sends you to a job, you get that job and things go helter-skelter. 
you stand your ground. God has you there for a reason. You just do your job and you be the man or woman of God that God calls you to be. You don't lower yourself to the nonsense. You keep your, your faith. You keep your confidence in God. You keep trusting God no matter how much they don't like you. You stand strong because of God be for you, baby, and God is for you. It really doesn't matter who's against you. It doesn't, I mean, that's not even a, an issue. It's an annoyance, of course, because we are human and our feelings get hurt, but it's not an issue. God has assigned you to a location, to a person, to an activity. You follow through and you don't back down. You don't back down. You are to obey God, not man. You don't back down. You trust God. Some of you may have to trust God all the way to jail. And never been in jail in your life. These are the last days. Are you going to be ready for those kind of challenges? Are you going to be believe, be able to continue to believe when they give you a five-year sentence and you lose your house in the long run because of something you obey that God told you to do. Uh-huh. Last days now. We have to be ready. We have to be ready to pay the price. Count the cost, y'all. Because the, the cost is going to start. It, it's going to start revving up. Yeah. Price is going to start getting higher and higher. Some of you will lose your jobs because you have obeyed God. I lost a job because I obeyed what I believe God wanted me to do. And guess what? God had a better job with more hours. Two days later, got the call. Two days later. And what? One, two, three, four, five. Weekend over. Monday comes. I'm at work. My new job. Some application I filled out a year and a half prior to that. Forgot all about it. And here they're calling. Are you still interested in the position? For I was like, I don't believe it. Look at God. God had me. And he's got you. You don't have to fear. When you stand for God, you stand for, I mean, you are, that's the best stand. That's the only stand that counts. And God will not let you stand and not cover you. And if he allows you to do time, there are some souls in that prison that you're supposed to minister to. Take it as a ministry, not a punishment. Don't take it as God abandoning you. Whatever God does, it's all about purpose, you guys. Got to remember that. It's all about purpose. God operates out of love and purpose. He is love, and he's all about purpose. And whatever he allows you to go through, whatever challenges and people he allows you to have to have conflict with, it is to show your godly character in the middle of their foolish nonsense. And they may not admit it. They may not say a word. They may not acknowledge anything. But all the way down the road after the dust settles, they're steadily playing that whole thing in their mind of how stupid they acted and how kind and how classy you were, how full of integrity you were while being blamed for something you didn't do, how full of mercy you were when things are being taken away from you that you didn't deserve to have done. See, God is using us as beacons of light. So we have to be willing to walk with him through the fire, walk with him through the flood. We have to be willing to walk with him through hatred, to walk with him through ungratefulness, to walk with him through the lies, to walk with him through the cheating, 
to walk with him through the betrayals, through the abandonments of people, to walk with him. Because when you walk with him and you come out on the other side, you're smelling sweet, looking good, and there's no sign of trouble on you anywhere. Anywhere. Because you walked with God, his way, standing on his word, trusting in his promises for you, like Moses did. Jesus went all the way to the cross based on God's promises. Did he not? Did he not three days later get risen from the dead? Did he not? Was he not the resurrection? Yes, he was resurrected. And he lives today in us through the Holy Spirit. Hello. Mm -hmm. So that death was necessary now, wasn't it? Those are the necessary evils that God uses in our lives when he wants to accomplish a particular purpose through us, with us, for us, and in us. God bless you as you begin to trust him more and more. God bless you to stick to his promises, to stand on his word when you have nothing but doubt and questions. Stand anyway. When you've done all to stand, stand. Mm. I tell you to stand, be unmovable, unshakable, always abounding in the word of the Lord. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be blessed in the Lord. It shall be well with thee. God bless you. Amen.